All right, so we have the height of three-year-old boys that's said to be approximately normally distributed. And this is Duncan and Shane are three-year-old boys, and Duncan is 32 inches tall and is at the 32nd percentile of the distribution. Shane is 34 inches tall and is at the 62nd percentile of the distribution. So which of the following is closest to the mean of the height distribution? Okay, so let's just, um, let's actually draw like a little sketch to get a sense of what's going on here. So a normal distribution. So uh, Duncan is 32 inches tall and the 32nd percentile. That means that, coincidentally, that the area to the left of 32 is going to be 0.32. And then if Shane is 34 inches tall and at the, and at 62 inches and at 62nd percentile, I mean, that means there's 0.62 area to the left of the value of 34. Or that means there's um, 1 minus 62% or 0.38 to the right. So we want to figure out what value in the, is in the center. What's the actual mean? And you can't just guess um, because it's in the middle. Because obviously these values are pretty close and they don't want that. Um, so what we're going to do is convert these to z-scores and then solve for the mean from the z-score. So let's recall that a z-score is equal to the observation value, so x minus the mean over the standard deviation. So since this is the normal distribution, each of these values correspond to z-score. So we'll have this one, this 32 will correspond, we'll say z1, and the 34 will correspond to, let's say, z2. So z1 is the, is the value in the normal distribution with 0.32 area to the left. So we can use this calculator, go to the inverse norm function, type 0.32, and that'll give us our z1. So our z1 is about to negative 0.47. z2 will have an area of 0.62 to the left. So inverse norm again, 0.62. So z2 is about 0.42. 305. Okay, so now we have two equations. So for 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 Duncan's, we're gonna have that this is gonna equal to 32 minus the mean over the standard deviation. So we're gonna have negative 0.47 is equal to 32 minus mu over sigma, and then for Shane, we're going to have this is equal to 34 minus mu over sigma. So now we have two equations and two variables. So we just have a system of equations. Um, so this just becomes an algebra problem. So what you can do is um, solve one of the equations for one of the variables plug, plug it into the other one. So let's go ahead, let's have, let's, let's multiply this by sigma and then we'll get negative 0.47 times sigma equals 32 minus mu. Then if we add mu to both sides, and add 0.47 sigma, that means mu will be equal to 32 plus 0.47 sigma. Now what we can do is then substitute this into this mu over here. So what we're going to get 0.305 is equal to 35 minus this value here. So minus 32 plus 0.47 sigma. All over sigma. 
multiply both sides by sigma, you'll get 0 0.305 sigma equals 34 minus 32, which is 2. 34 minus, so minus 0.47 sigma. Okay, so then we uh, add 0.47 sigma to both sides. We'll get 0.775 sigma equals 2. And then sigma will then be 2 divided by 0.775. And it will be about 0.258. Okay, now that we have sigma, we can find mu by plugging point, but plugging 2.58 into here. So we'll get that mu is 32 plus 0.47 times 2.58, which will be about 32.2 or 33.21. And so the answer will be D. And that, that's a, uh, that one requires some work. All right, 32. A right, company shifts gift baskets that contains pears and apples, or apples and pears. The distributions of weight for the apples, the pears, and the baskets are approximately normal. The mean standard deviation for distribution is shown in the table below. The weights are assumed to be independent. We have means and standard deviations. We let W represent the total weight of four apples, six pears, and one basket. What's the closest all to the standard? What's the closest to the standard deviation of W? So let's have W be equal to let's have A B apples for A plus six P for pairs and plus one B or just B for basket. So the standard deviation of W, we're going to need to find the variance. So the standard deviation is the square root of the variance of W. So let's find that. So the variance of W will be four times the variance of the apple. So four times the variance of the apples plus six times the variance of the pairs of P plus variance of B. I mean, the variance is our distance standard deviation squared. So let's we can plug and chug that into our calculator. So we'll get four times 0 0.2 squared plus six times 0.18 squared plus 1.2 Remember now this is this is the variance. This is what this is. Or this is what that is. So we take the square root of this. And that'll be the standard deviation. So standard deviation would be a 1.97. So our answer is B. Our researchers will conduct a study of the television viewing habits of children. They will select a simple random sample of children and report the number of hours of television and film watching. The researchers will, will report the sample mean as a point estimate of the population. Which of the following statement is, um, is correct for the sample mean as a point estimate? All right, so um, sample of size 25 will produce more variability of the estimator than a sample of size 50. Smaller sample. Um, yeah, I mean that's correct. I mean, um, remember, um, the more data we have, the more precise our essence will be. So, a small, so when we say there's more variability, more variability means like um, we can have more, uh, more um, uh, uh, a larger range of value of, um, for estimating something. Um, think of it as like. If you want to, you know, estimate, you know, the the average, you know, height 
of you know of a person and you know in you know California or something. Um, if you took a sample of you know five people, um, it's taught, and you took their average. You know, since there's only five people, you know, the the average can be severely affected by you know one or two of those people. Maybe one of those two of those people are like are really short. Maybe they're like four foot four feet, four foot five, and or maybe like one or two of them are like you know six foot five. Um, so those those outliers will significantly impact the estimate of the of the sample of the population mean. But if it took ten thousand people, um, having you know you know some outliers won't severely affect it as much. Um, and the chances that you'll have um, a higher proportion of outliers is going to be less. You know? um, so a um, let's just look at the other one. So um, that's the opposite of b. So it's obviously not b. Um, the sample size 25 degrees of bias. No, it's still gonna um, it's still gonna be centered at the um, at the true population of the spectrum. And same thing. Doesn't matter. Sample size don't really affect um, the bias of the estimates. Right, in 34. So a research study indicated a negative linear relationship between the two variables, the number of hours per week spent exercising and the number of seconds it takes to run one lap around the track. Here's the data. Or if we assume all the conditions for inference are met, which of the following is the appropriate test statistic for testing a null hypothesis, the slope of the population regression line equals zero. Okay, so let's go back to um, this, you know, a formula sheet. Remember, we're trying to find a standardized test statistic. So our statistics, you know, the estimate of the slope. So you know, it's going to be we will have b. And um, if we're saying that the, you know the parameter is zero, just you know minus zero on top, you'll just have your you know you'll just have your sample estimate of the slope. And then and remember, it's standard error of the statistic. So um, again, let's look at what we're trying to estimate. We're trying to estimate, you know, the slope. Here we can look the coefficient of our variable exercise time is negative point, is negative two point two. So that's going to be what's on top. Negative two point two minus zero is negative two point two, obviously. Divided by the standard error, point oh seven. And so the answer will be B. In 35, the table below shows, shows historical data for the distribution of the number of customers in half hour time period who visit the electronics department of a retail store. For example, on 25% of the time periods for which data were collected, no customers were observed in the electronics department of the store. There's a number of customers, what proportion? There are more, so forth. The best gave the distribution has changed, you know, over the um, they took uh, 50 randomized time periods, collected the data, and they conducted a chi squared test for goodness of fit. Uh, the test statistic was 10.13 and a p value of 0.0175. Which of these statements is true? All right, so um, at the significance level, alpha equals 0.05. The data provide convincing evidence that the current distribution is different from the historical distribution. Well, um, our p values, you know, below our alpha 0 0.05. Remember, our p value, if it's below our alpha level, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis and claim that we have convincing evidence that the alternative hypothesis is true. And so, you know, since, since 0.0175 is less than 0.05, um, that, you know, this would be our answer. It's that would be correct. It's a QA. Um, all right, let's see. For this, um, B is, you know, a higher alpha level. So you would still reject an hypothesis. Um, 
and it has nothing to do with estimating mean number and all that. So, yep. 